So a lot of things go into me picking which franchise I'm going to cover for each video. Sometimes it's a request, it's something that you guys really want to see. Sometimes there's a new entry of the franchise that's coming out, so I'll cover that franchise then. And other times, I just haven't seen a movie in a while and I really want to watch it. And this is one of those videos. This week, we're talking about Trancers, the classic sci-fi time travel series. And we're going to find out if the continuity works or if it's just for squids. Okay, so the first Trancers film came out in 1984 and we're obviously in the future. And we meet Jack Death and he's after a guy named Whistler who turns people into Trancers, which are sort of zombies. The babe enlists Jack and they tell him that Whistler has gone back in time to 1985 and he's killing the ancestors of the head council. Kind of like Terminator. Time travel is treated pretty interestingly as Reigns sends his consciousness back into his ancestor Phil who is sleeping with Jamie Buckman and living in Los Angeles. There's transfers here too and we find out that Whistler can only trans people with weak minds, called squids, like this tanning guru and Jack uses his long second, a watch that stretches one second into ten. Lena very quickly accepts that this guy from the future has taken over another guy's body and McNulty pops in in the body of his ancestor, a little girl. Jack finds Hap, who is the last remaining ancestor of the council, and there's a final face-off on a roof, and Jack uses a long second to save Lena, and then sends Whistler's consciousness back to the future, but since his body there was destroyed, he did. Jack is stuck in the past, which is kind of mean considering that that means that Phil's mind is forever dormant, but McNulty's there to potentially get him back home. So in 1988, a film called Pulse Pounders was supposed to be an anthology film featuring a Trancer segment, but the other segments were never really completed. Trancer's City of Lost Angels, or Trancer's 1.5, survived and was finally released in 2013, and McNulty's back and when a supercriminal named Evelyn Shock escapes to kill Jack Death, McNulty says that he's in 1988. The movie then accidentally contradicts itself by saying it's 1986, but that's a mistake. Several times they say 88, so let's stick with that. McNulty's ancestor shows up, aged three more years, and after some misdirection, Shock's ancestor is revealed and he, she attacks. And they're both sent up the line. They duke it out, and Jack defeats the deadly supercriminal with the help of pomade. Seriously. And gets sent back to 1988. Three years passed, and in 1991, we get the release of Trancers 2, The Return of Jack Death. But remember, since Pulse Pounders was shelved, this was the first that audiences had seen Jack since 1984. He's still with Lena, and says that he's been in LA for the last six years, so we're in 1991 here. McNulty's back, and we find out that Whistler had a brother, so transfers are back. And there's a new method of time travel called a TCL chamber that can only send people forward through time. And Jack's future body is dying, so they have to bring him back or he'll be trapped in the past. Hap's back, and he's rich now, and, um... Jack tucks his t-shirt into his pants. Who does that? Baby McNulty is back, and she's 15 now, and we see another future agent in a mental home with Sister Hyde and Mr. West. And Richard Lynch, at his most mummy-looking, is the big bad. Turns out that the other agent is Jack's dead wife, Alice, her consciousness taken the day before she died. And they're reunited, which of course causes issues with Lena. A little later, they talk about being together for seven years, so I guess some time passes here? It was literally a day or so ago that they were saying six years, and now everyone talks about seven years, but six makes more sense, so let's just say that the ladies were a little off, and then this van's plates say that it's 91, so that settles it. Six years. The always lovely Barbara Crampton pops in, and a final raid on Wardo's facility destroys his transfer drug, and Dammers gets shot again, and Wardo gets forked. Jack sends Alice back into the future instead of her going back up the line so she won't die as soon as she goes back, which I guess doesn't mess with the time stream. If her consciousness didn't go back to the time that she died, wouldn't that affect the future? Time travel. Jack stays in the past, so I guess screw poor Phil's mind, because future Jack's body dies due to inactivity and Jack is stuck in the past forever. 
So I guess Phil's kind of dead. They kind of established he was a little bit of a dick anyway, so I guess it's okay. A mere one year later and Jack's back in Trancers 3, Death Lives. The opening voiceover tells us that he's from the year 2360, which, unless I missed it, is the first on-screen mention of the future date, even though all the video box art for the other films says he's from 2247, and then it shows us that we're now in 1992. And Helen Hunt is here, and bless her heart for doing this, even though that she was already a successful actress by now, and her and Jack are splitting up. A robot named Shark takes Jack back into the future, which it says is 2352, so I guess eight years before he left. Reigns is back, and so is Alice, but McNulty is dead, so this is clearly after he left, which really makes the 2360-2352 thing a little bit on the confusing side. And Sean's dad from Monster Squad is all that's left of the council now. In 92, the military is creating transers with the help of Frank's brother Larry, and Jack is sent to 2005, and Lena's remarried with kids. And he teams up with Shark to take down Daddy Mother, and he returns to the future, and all transers have been eliminated, and his new assignment is to travel through time to fix the past, setting us up for more. After two years, we saw Transfers 4, Jack of Swords, and if you're a comic fan, you know that this is a good sign. Jack tells us that he's from the year 2353, so it looks like a year has passed since the last film, and he's still working for Harris, but Shark has been destroyed, and Harris and Alice are now a couple. She's not around, and neither is Lena nor Reigns. He does get a new long second watch that has more than a single charge, and a new time machine, and accidentally ends up stranded in a medieval era with trancers. But it's actually another dimension called Orpheus, which he's informed of by Deputy Stubbs, and whoops, the long second watch works in reverse here. The trancers are the ruling class, so Jack teams up with the rebel tunnel rats and the king's son, and there's prophecies about Jack, so let's see. Hero from the future trapped in a medieval land who's prophesied to be the savior. Does he get a chainsaw hand? Eventually, everyone fights, and Jack shoots his gun in the most fantastic FX work ever, and then shoots Evil Caliban, who just vanishes. So, time is a little nebulous but we know that Jack's in at least in another dimension, and the beginning says he was headed to 2190, so let's just assume that he's in the Orpheus version of that year. Parts 4 and 5 were shot back to back, and in 1994 we get the second part with Trancers 5, Sudden Death, and we're treated to more adventures on Jack on Orpheus. Thanks. I hate it. We're told that it's a month later, and Caliban is restored, and... Silliness happens, including Jack facing off against himself, and eventually Caliban again. There's a big final battle that looks like it costs dozens and dozens of dollars, and Jack gets stabbed, and Prospero kills his dad, while Jack manages to use this crystal thing to head back home. Prospero accidentally comes with him, and Jack gets a happy ending back in 2353. Peter David. Great Hulk writer. Not so much Jack Death. But eight years later, in 2002, Full Moon thought it would be a good idea to revive the franchise, but Tim Thomerson took a pass. Although he does make a cameo by way of old footage, and they send him down the line to 2022, which it says is 300 years earlier, so the beginning footage is set in 2322, so before the events of the first film. I mean, you could get away with it if you said that they were approximating, but they actually say 300 years, 1 minute, and 49 seconds, so we're talking exact dates here. Oh, and we're in a future time in which cordless home phones are still a thing, and Jack inhabits the body of his daughter. We find out that when Jack vanished in Part 3, Lena was pregnant, and the little girl he sees in 2005 was actually his. So that means that Joe here was born in either 92 or 93, and in Part 3's 2005, she'd be 13, so she'd be about 30 here. And Jack has to deal with her job with state-of-the-art 2022 desktop, which shows that we're in the tail end of 22, most likely October or early November. Transfers abound, long seconds occur, 
and everything just looks and feels as cheap as possible. These transfers are made by being zapped by a meteor and develop complex facial prosthetics and in a final battle discount Walter White pitches in but gets killed and the villain gets her head uh, tranced off I, I guess. Joe kills the big bad who turns into a Halloween mask and Jack stays in her body to keep hunting transers although since there were no more movies let's assume that he eventually gave his own damn daughter her brain back. So there you have it it's six and a half movies um, and the continuity is a little little all over the place i mean story continuity wise it's fairly consistent but uh the, the dates are all over the place it's like it's like for a movie about time travel you think they would have the dates pretty clear cut and written down but no they, they kept getting them screwed up but um a really enjoyable series i uh, four five and six were kind of hard to watch but the first three were great um i, I love transfers one if you haven't seen the first transfers movie you should definitely check that out at least um it's great and uh, that's about it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you uh, will leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. Tell me what else you want to see in sci-fi timelines. And uh, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff that you normally would do at the ending of a video. And also check out the Patreon page. It's right over here. Uh, these people also support the videos and help me get more made. You can too. You can help me out. And uh, until then, I'll see you in another couple weeks with another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.